Oh, <laughs> hey friends, I didn't see you there. Well, guess what? You're just in time for story time today. And I have a super fun apple picking book. And I'm wearing my favorite apple sweater. And guess what? I just came back from visiting my favorite apple orchard. We did some apple picking, it was so fun. So. Since September is the month that we're in and it's all about harvesting apples, I thought it would be a perfect time to read an apple book and take a little visit to the apple orchard. Are you ready? Alrighty, well first we'll read our book and then I'll take you along with me to the apple orchard. Sounds good. So today's fun book is about Curious George and his apple harvest. It says Curious George Apple Harvest. And the adaptation is by Lynn Polvino. And this book is actually based on the TV series, maybe you've seen it, by Chuck Tately. It was harvest time and Mr. Rankins needed help picking his apples. George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, were happy to lend a hand. or maybe a foot in George's case. Mr. Rankins explained that they needed to collect every apple. That's a lot. I'm going to join the Mrs. Round Back, he said, but once you fill that cart, you can unload it into the washing trough. Mr. Rankins took his cart full of apples back to the barn and dumped them into the water. Hmm, must be the apples bath time, thought George. George climbed up the branches, collected the shiny red apples in his friend's hat, and then put them into the cart. What fun! High up in the tree, he even saw Jumpy the squirrel picking apples too. George decided to help. He took Jumpy's apple and he tossed it into the cart with the rest of Mr. Rankin's apples. But Jumpy wanted the apple for himself, so he leaped into the cart and took it back and George tried to stop him. Easy now, George, the man with the yellow hat said. The lever that you're touching releases all the apples. George looked at the lever. Well, he thought it was an excellent way to get Jumpy out, out of the cart. But the man with the yellow hat said, George, no! George pulled the lever and Jumpy tumbled out along with all of the apples. That's okay, said his friend. We can gather them up again. But guess what? Jumpy had found his apple and he ran to hide it inside the barn. And George decided to follow. George looked around the inside of the barn in wonder. There were all sorts of things to climb on and things to swing from. This must be some sort of monkey playground, he thought. But George was not here to play. He had to get that apple from Jumpy. And if it weren't so dark in the barn, maybe he could see a little bit better. Well, he found a light switch and he flipped it. Everything started moving. It was a machine, not a playground. George wondered how it worked. He watched the bucket scoop up the apples and he decided that they must carry the apples high away from the squirrels. But wait, where's Jumpy? Oh, there he was. Jumpy still had the apple he took from the cart. George chased Jumpy, grabbed the apple and threw it into the bin high out of reach but suddenly the machine stopped. Hmm, what's going on? George found a button and pushed it. The machine started again. This time, all of the parts started working, including the moving belt. But when he looked up, he saw all of the Rankinson's beautiful apples being chopped up into bits. Oh no. And then they were being dropped into a giant barrel and a lid was lowered tightly on top of them. Hmm, they're being chopped up and then smashed. What do you think's happening to the apples? 
Uh oh. The lid was pushed too tightly and liquid began to pour out of the barrel. What a mess. George had an idea. So he ran up and he put his mouth under the liquid. Mmm, tasted good. A lot like apples. But there was too much of it coming out. Luckily, he found some empty containers. George scrambled to put the containers on the moving belt fast enough to catch the liquid. Then he looked down at the end of the belt and he saw the containers falling onto the floor. Oh no! George ran to catch them, but then he needed to stop the machine. So what did what'd that machine end up making? You're right, some apple juice or apple cider. Mmm, sounds yummy. Soon he had filled all of the containers, but the liquid continued to pour out. He looked around for another container, didn't see one, but he did find a big pair of rubber boots. <laughs> As the last boot was filled, the liquid stopped pouring and the machine stopped. Phew! The farmer's and George's friend appeared in the doorway. Well, I'll be, exclaimed Mr. Rankins. Uh-oh, George froze. He was nervous. He wasn't sure what was going to happen. The Rankinsons would probably be upset that he ruined their apples, right? George, Mrs. Rankins rushed up to him. You've done a fantastic job. You've done all of that by yourself? You already bottled and pressed the cider? Wow. Thank you very much, George. <laughs> Did you think she was going to say that? This is some machine, said the man with the yellow hat. See, the apples are washed here, Mrs. Rankin explained. Then they're lifted up to the chopper because the chopped apples give more juice. The juice is pressed out of the apples and then it's put into the bottle. George had not ruined the apples. He had just turned them into apple cider. <laughs> How silly! He didn't realize what he was doing. Mr. Rankins handed an apple to George. Here, you've earned it, he said. George knew someone who wanted the apple more than he did. So he'd had enough apples for one day. And guess who he shared his apple with? You're right, Jumpy the Squirrel. <laughs> Aw. The end. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed that book. I sure did. That was a really silly book. And guess what? This book is even more special because it has fun activities that you can do. At the end of the book, there's this little puzzle and you can figure out the order of how the apple juice is made. So that's fun. And then there's even two little recipes on how you can cut up apples and turn them into something really cool. <laughs> and on the back, there's two websites that you can check out. There's some online educational games and just some more fun activities. So you can either go to pbskids.org or you can go to CuriousGeorge.com. I'll make sure to put the links down below and then you, your mom and dad can help you click on them and you can play really fun computer games too. <laughs> All right, well, enough of that. Let's get started and let's take you to the apple orchard with me, okay? Let's go. It's Miss Brooke and you guys get to come along with me today. I'm so excited. We're gonna go apple picking and it's gonna be super fun. Are you ready? I'm ready and I'm really ready for some apples and maybe even turning it into apple pie. Mm. <laughs> well, today we are here in Watsonville, California and we are at Gizditch Ranch, one of my favorite places. I grew up coming here as a kid and it's super fun. Well. We got our bag, and we got our masks, and we are going to go 
look through the apple orchards and see what kind of apples we can find. We have red ones and green ones and yellow ones. It's gonna be great. So let's go looking for the red delicious apples, the golden delicious apples, and the green pippin apples. All right, let's go. All right, friends, are you ready to pick some apples? Let's do it. So I wanna show you the proper apple picking technique. So you wanna be careful with your apple, but you're gonna twist your apple and then pull like that. <laughs> Put it in our bag and we'll keep going. All right, friends. Well, I had so much fun going apple picking with you and walking around Gizditch Ranch. I hope you did too. Well, I'm gonna get going and I'm gonna go wash my apples, take them home and get baking and drink some apple juice. Ooh, this is the best. <laughs> I'm so happy you came along with me today and I can't wait for our next adventures, okay? So stay tuned. Don't forget, you can always email me at learnwithmissbrooke at gmail.com and I would love to hear from you. I especially, I'm curious, what's your favorite type of apple? Awesome. Well, I will talk to you soon. Bye, friends. Love you.